just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to our online experience. Wherever you're at, happy July 4th. I hope you're enjoying your time with your family. Check out this message. It's going to bless you. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name's Dean. If you're a guest, thank you for coming. Let's open our Bibles. Happy 4th of July. God bless America, huh? And it's um, not perfect, never has been. But I really, yesterday I thought I would annoy all of the people that are super down on America. And I put up like 30 flags around my yard. It's just because I like that. Mm. <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a collection at uh, our church out of the book of Daniel. So if you turn to Daniel chapter 2, we're talking about dreams. In fact, when you came in as a, with your envelope, I believe you got a little bookmark with our points from last week. Because we had several people say, what, what were those points about dreams? So if you didn't pick one up, they're back at the table. The premise of this collection is that in the Bible, all kinds of cool things happen with dreams. That God reveals stuff, prophetic stuff. To Dan We're using Daniel as an example, but it happens to Joseph and it happens to Peter in a dream. Peter had a revelation that the, what, of what the Holy Spirit wanted to do. And you ought to be glad he did because he had a dream that the power of God wouldn't just be for Jewish people, it would be for Gentiles. And since this is primarily a Gentile audience, we ought to say hallelujah. And we believe in the book of Acts, like the Holy Spirit comes down and the prophecy was that God's people would dream dreams and have visions. So I'm, I, I'm using the idea of dreams in, in two ways. Number one, the, the, the kind of dream that comes when you are asleep, pa uh, passive state of mind, but God uses your openness in sleep to deposit a picture of your future. And I'm also using vision in the sense of, uh, or dream in the sense of a vision that you can get while you're awake, that God can give you a picture in your conscious mind. He doesn't need you to be unconscious. He can do it when you're conscious and he can give you a vision of what your life is going to be. He can give you a picture of what you ought to be driving for. And there's nothing more satisfying than having a picture from God and seeing it come to pass. So all we have to do is really be open. Say with me, it's not other people's problem. <laughs> Say, it's not them, it's me. Do you believe that? You don't really believe it, do you? You believe it's them, don't you? I want to tell a story about being open to the idea that it might be you. And I... Uh, because, because the people involved are dear to me, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm not going to use any names, but there was a, a family that went on vacation to, let's say Paris. And when they were leaving the husband picture, he's very bright, persuasive. He's a kind man. He's a patient man. He's a good looking man. And he's, he's packed up and he turns to his uh, traveling companion, doesn't matter who it is, but they've been married for 33 years. And so he says, I, I'm ready. I've got my passport. Do you have your passport? And she says, where is it? It's... It's on the table. I put it on the table. It's been on the table. What did you do with my passport? And he says, or for the sake of the story, I'll say, I said, and I said, what you, uh, I didn't touch your passport. 
well, it's, it's been on the table all week. Maybe you threw it away. And I said, is it possible you put it in your bag? And she said, I didn't put it in my bag. You must have thrown it away. Go look in the garbage. Now, I said, I'm happy to look in the garbage, but don't you want to look in your bag? And she said, I know I didn't put it in my bag, and you don't know if you threw it away. So you go look through the garbage. So I walk out there, and I go through a Parisian garbage can, just like I've gone through Tacoma garbage cans, and there's no passport in there. So I come back in and say, no passport in the garbage. Would you like to look through your bag? And she says, look under the couch, look under the bed. And I said, look in your bag. She says, it's not in my bag and I'll prove it. She unzips it and she flips it open and there's her passport. Hallelujah! And th this will change not just America, but the world. If you learn this lesson today, your husband is right. That's what you need to know. Okay, get it in. Get it in your spirit. That was, um, that was a quiet cab ride. Quiet. <laughs> quiet. And I said, this is going to be the best sermon illustration. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Like, we're positive... She was positive. It was more likely that I threw it away than put it, it, we don't make progress until we say, what if it's me, right? right, right. That's, that's not unique to one person. That's all of us. What if it's me? What if God still speaks, right? What if he's still moving? What if he's still giving revelation? And the problem isn't him, it's that I'm too busy, too stubborn, I'm not teachable enough, and he wants to, what if God wants to give me a dream? What if God isn't being mean? What if he's not being a jerk? What if he's not punishing me? What if he is open and powerful and loving and and, he, and he's anxious to give me good things, but I'm not looking for it, listening to it. Is that possible? Yeah. One night, it says, during the second year of his reign, a man named Nebuchadnezzar is now, he's the king of the world. There are some parts of the world that aren't under his domain, but the Persian Empire is the most powerful empire on earth. He's a young man, and he's only in, you know, like the 16th month, 17th month, 18th month of being king. That's not so long that you have consolidated power, but it's long enough that you've made a few mistakes and you've learned some things. And it says during the second year of his reign, he had, a, he had disturbing dreams. So that's, that's uh, plural, right? It keeps happening. Here, here's something to know about dreams. Sometimes a dream gives you a passion for the future, but a lot of times a dream will un, unsettle you in the present. Why, why, is the, why is it that God... We have this contemporary notion that God's always trying to get you to be peaceful. He's actually trying to get you moving so that he can get you to holiness so that you can be peaceful for real. But he's not trying to make you peaceful first. Peace is an outcome of obedience. Peace is an outcome of the power of God flowing through you. And this cat is not at peace. And the more God gives him a dream, the more unsettled he becomes. So he calls his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, astrologers. We'll, we'll all insert our own stuff here. So he calls his horoscope, his, uh, all, all the stuff. What do we do, right? He calls his best friend. He calls all, 
And he demanded, check this out, that they tell him what he had dreamed. This is a twist. He didn't ask them what the dream meant. He asked them what the dream was. And we don't exactly know why just yet. As they stood before the king, he said, I've had a dream that deeply troubles me and I must know what it means. And when the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic, a lot of people wonder why half of the book of Daniel is written in Aramaic and half is in Hebrew. Would you like to know Dean's conclusion? You should say yes because I'm going to do it anyway, but... (laughs) My conclusion is Daniel had these prophetic things were written in Aramaic because that's the language of Gentiles. And God wanted Daniel to send a message to the Persian people, to all the Gentile world. God is on the move. And then later on, the second half of the book of Daniel's in Hebrew, because God wanted to speak to his specifically to his people and say, you better get on the move. That, doesn't that sound like God? Yeah. So he answers in Aramaic, which means this is for a Gentile audience. He says, long live the king. Please tell us the dream. Then we'll tell you what it means. And the king said to astrologers, some of you should use this when you call the sorcerer 1-800 number, 1-900 sorcerer thing. I think they call it psychic. Yeah, you know this, is, uh, this does, isn't ancient. This is today. Nancy Reagan wouldn't make... Does anybody remember her? Or is this all too young? <laughs> she wouldn't make a move without a psychic, a sorcerer, looking at her calendar. You remember that? Yeah. So our, our brains love mystical, disconnected from personal relationship. And he, he's, he's saying to these people, I'm serious, if you don't tell me what my dream means, you'll be torn limb from limb and your house will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if, if you tell me what I dreamt, or what I dreamed and what the dream means. I'll give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. And they said again, please your majesty, tell us the dream and we will tell you what it means. Back and forth like an old married couple. And so he replies, I know what you're doing. You're stalling for time because you know I'm serious when I say, if you don't tell me the dream, you're doomed. So, You have conspired to tell me lies, hoping I will change my mind, but tell me the dream. Then I'll know you can tell me what it means. And the astrologer replies, no one on earth can tell the king this dream. And no king, however great or powerful, has ever asked such a thing of a magician, enchanter, astrologer. The king's demand is impossible. No one but the gods can tell you your dream, and they don't live here among people. The king was furious, and he ordered all the wise men of Babylon be executed because of the king's decree. Men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. I'm going to parachute out right there. Um, I want to talk about what dreams do, and the first thing that a dream does is a dream aligns us, or rather... It shows us what we're currently aligned with. When you see see the king and he's threatening these magicians, I want you to notice that something has happened by the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, and that is he thinks they're full of misleading ideas. (laughs) He doesn't believe them anymore. He doesn't disbelieve them enough to fire them, but he doesn't believe them enough to hang his whole empire on it. These dreams kept coming, and as they came, they didn't only unsettle him about what the future was, it was unsettling him about who he had aligned with, because this guy's whole life 
is run on astrologers and enchanters and magicians. These are the people, he could handle an army, Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, history tells us he knew how to administrate a nation, but what he didn't know was what were the gods up to? What's the future gonna be like? Because there's nobody here who knows any facts about the future. We have faith about the future, we have fear about the future, but we don't have facts, right? So the question is, how have I aligned myself? With whom have I aligned myself? With what have I aligned myself that the minute I start getting into the unknown, I rely on that? And Daniel had started to say, maybe this isn't working. Maybe this is all lies. Maybe my whole destiny is hanging by a thread because I'm trusting these people. And so he devises this idea. He had had the dream apparently multiple times and he, he wants to know what it means, but he wants to know, even more importantly, can I trust the sources that I've aligned myself with? This, uh, this, hey, Jesus person, you can have been baptized and you're still in alignment with secular, godless ideas. Because some of you, you're taking your cues from a political party. Some of you are taking your cues, you take more cues from your horoscope than you do from your Bible. No? You take more, you, when you go out and have a drink with the girls on Friday night, you take more of your cues from these people who can't organize their own life enough to get the laundry done. You know what I'm saying? but they want to organize your life and who you should be married or not married to. Am I wrong? And God gives this dream and it's not just changing Nebuchadnezzar out there. It's helping him realize that right now, right here. And that's what a dream ought to do in us. Jesus person, we are called to be in alignment with his spirit. Not with Fox News, not with CNN, not, not with candidates, not with horoscopes, not with psychics, not with peer groups. I must be getting close to the truth because it's getting quiet. <laughs> Alignment. Next one, authority. Everybody say authority. authority. Dreams reveal who and what we have authority over. Why is God giving Nebuchadnezzar the dream? Because he's the king. He's the king and he knows exactly what the dream is about. He doesn't know exactly, I should rephrase that. He doesn't know exactly what the dream is about, but he knows that if the dream is coming to him, it's concerning his kingdom. True or false? Yeah, it's not about Jerusalem and the, the Hebrews. Because he's not a Hebrew. It's not about somebody else's family. And here's what the enemy wants you to do. The enemy is not, never afraid of using the mystical. You know this? That's why he, the enemy has a counterfeit for everything powerful in the spirit that God wants to do. The enemy has a counterfeit. That God gives you the baptism of the Holy Spirit and... The enemy gives you Jack Daniels. You know what I'm saying? And apparently they're close enough. <laughs> right? Because on the book, of, at the book of Acts, what were people saying? They kind of seem drunk. So God gives you, God gives people ec ecstatic, overwhelming, uninhibited, pouring out of his power. True or false? Yeah, and, the, and it take, you have to wait on the Lord to receive it. Jack Daniels will give you uninhibited, and you don't even have to wait. You just slug that thing back. A dream, this dream is teaching that God is giving us dreams for what we have authority for. What do we have authority for? Our schedule, let's just start right here. Dean has authority for? Dean, 
True or false? And Dean also has authority for his little family. True or false? Yeah. I used to pray like, God, I, I wish I could prophesy over my kids. Or I was waiting for God to give me an authority he had already given me. I never prayed for the authority to pray over my children. God gave me the authority when he made them my children. I pray for authority to speak over your children because they ain't mine. But the Christian world has turned off dreams. This is my conviction. Because we've seen it abused in the area of authority. You'll see people go, God gave me a dream about that you're supposed to start a business and you're, no, just like I hit mute. God doesn't give you a dream about things that I have authority over. So don't power up on me. One time I had this guy sent me a letter. God gave me a dream that there's something wrong, ungodly on your laptop. And he told me in, by the power of the Holy Spirit that you were supposed to submit your laptop to, to these people. And I, I typed back and I said, did God tell you I don't have a laptop? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying I do it, I'm doing it all on my phone I didn't own one then I don't own one now crazy how God could give her an insight about a machine I hadn't even bought yet and that's the stuff that's turned you off to dreams because the people you see using it are crazy. <laughs> Am I wrong? Why don't we crave, why don't we crave Acts chapter 2 in the church anymore? Why don't we believe in speaking in tongues? And why don't we believe in healing? And why don't we believe in dreams? Because we let the nuts take it over. Am I wrong, sister? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm asking God in this series. Is that sane, godly uh, people like me and you would get a hunger for the supernatural. And we wouldn't just wait for the crazy people to be talking. But we would use our mind and open our spirit. Number three, dreams reveal who and what we have access to. Now check this out. He's pulling, Dan Nebuchadnezzar pulls Daniel in because why? Daniel's role is for counsel. God will pull people into your story and God will pull you into other people's story, but not to have authority over them, but to come under them and encourage them. Nebuchadnezzar is saying to these men and women, help me, but I want to be able to trust your help. God is stirring him in a dream. And so he says, if you can't, if I can't trust where your power comes from, I can't trust your answer. So now he's pushing his circle. Do you really know God? Sometimes when God gives us a dream, it pushes our kids. Do they really know God? Right? It pushes your spouse. How, how, how deep do we really know Jesus? When, when one woman gets a great dream from God, everybody in her circle will either step up or step out. When one man really gets a word from God, really gets excited about being a great man, then everybody around you, you're going to find, will either step up or step out. Are you ready for that? I think that, again, this is, I'm just giving you reasons why people step out and why people don't really want. Do we really want God to move here today? Or we just want to wave flags and say, pass the mustard. <laughs> what if abundant life what if our church, what if our Catholic brothers and sisters, 
What if our Kojic brothers and sisters? What if our Episcopalian brothers and sisters? What if our Baptist brothers and sisters? What if we really said, God, in this place, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Yeah. Couldn't that be great? The fourth thing that's happening here, and I know I got to quit. Dreams reveal what we don't already know, what we're not aware of. It's about authority. It's about alignment. And it's about awareness. And it's uncomfortable to, to admit, God, we don't know everything. That's why I started this morning by saying, are we ready to say, okay, God, it's us. We're, we haven't been in your word. We haven't been praying. Are, are, are these things true? We don't. We know that we get divine revelation when we're in the presence of God. It's not, that's not, that's not an aha sentence. If I were having dinner with Elon Musk, I would get insight about what? I'd get insight about Tesla, right? Maybe about Twitter. <laughs> I don't know. If I were having dinner with Bill Gates, I would get insight about Microsoft, philanthropy. If I were having dinner with Oscar Mayer, I would, <laughs> I would get insight about what? Come on, help me. Hot dogs. If I were having insight, but you know what, what's happening? is people are getting insight from their sources, everybody, and we're not praying. I had a friendship, I'll close by telling the story, and I'm gonna tell it to you even though I know not everybody votes for the peop these people, but I, I became friendly with the chaplain of the Senate some years ago. His name is Barry Black, and Barry is a fabulous dude. He grew up... Uh, Seventh-day Adventist, got baptized in the Holy Spirit, was, uh, I want to say he was an admiral in the Navy. And the Senate needed a new chaplain. The chaplain of the Senate had retired. And they asked Barry Black. And, Barry, and as a chaplain of the Senate, what you do is you, you meet and pray and do pastoral care for the senator's of the United States. Now, some of you think that guy should be fired, right? Because <laughs> you, you think he's done. But these are human beings, right? Amen. So a senator came to him. Well, I was sitting in his office when he told me this story. I had just visited another senator who was running for president. And I was sitting in Barry's office and as I remember the story, I said to him, uh, hey, I just met with Senator so-and-so. Do you think that person will be the president? And he said, no, I don't. And I said, really? And he said, uh, he said yeah. I said, uh, why, if you don't mind my asking? He said, well, there's this one senator that I pray with and for the last six months he's been having dreams and he keeps coming to me and saying I keep having this dream and I don't know what it means and he's troubled by it because he's never had dreams like this before and I told him we're going to pray and we're going to believe that God will reveal to you what this dream means. And he said, we were praying together and he came back another time and said, I believe that this dream means that I'm supposed to do whatever. He had not declared for the presidency, had not whatever. And he said, this guy, and he repeated his name and I had never heard his name before. 
he said, I believe God in a dream has revealed this guy to this guy that he's going to be the president. And that guy's name was Barack Obama. I'm telling you, you like it, vote him, don't vote for him. I, I don't care. What I'm saying is God speaks to kings in dreams. And he speaks to housewives in dreams. This week, I had a friend say to me that God had given him a dream that he was in the wrong, and he was in a, a, a race, but he kept running this race in the wrong lane. And he had this dream, and several days later, his pastor came to him and said, you're in the wrong lane. Do you believe that? That guy lives here. He's here today. God speaks to elevate people. He speaks to direct people. And he can speak to us. America is a dream. It's a dream of, of people from nations multiple nations what if what if God could get take people from all over the world and we could be free to worship and we wouldn't have to be forced to think a certain way and are, are we living that dream perfectly but it is a dream and it is up to us to listen to God to cry out to God because you will receive information and insight from whoever you're talking about. When I'm talking to drug dealers, I get insight about drug dealing. When I'm talking to chefs, I get insight about food. And when I'm talking to God, when I talk to God, when I talk to God, I get insight about the universe. Can we do that right now? Let's stand, come on. If you need insight right now about something, if you're open to a breakthrough, open to a dream, I, I'm believing this collection of talks will get us, we'll, we'll, we're going to reclaim the supernatural from the Looney Tunes. We're going to reclaim the supernatural because we're, we're not going to be passive. We're not just going to talk to God about, I hope I have an extra 20 bucks to pay the gas. No, no, no. God's not just a provider. He is powerful. He can whisper to uh, uh, somebody you don't even know that they're going to be president and they're president. He can whisper to somebody that you haven't even met yet that they're supposed to give you and partner with you for a financial breakthrough. Can he do that? Can, uh, some of you are in a relationship hiatus and loneliness is kind of defining it. Can God not whisper to, to somebody something about you? Yes, he can. So if you have a need right now, whatever that need is, you just raise your hand all over this place. And I'm going to ask Melanie to come. She's going to close in prayer over all of these hands all over this place. Get it up, get it up, get up. <coughs> you get what you asked for. You know that, right? The brother of Jesus, his name is James. He said this great truth. You have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, he says, you do it for selfish reasons. So if we can right now, hands up, say we're going to ask, and we're going to ask just that God flow through us. We, we, have our, we all have our selfish reasons. I don't expect you to lay those down. But maybe we could, next to your reasons, just say, God, I'm open to another reason, another idea. Come on, let's pray. Mel, pray for these folks. God, we're ready. You see us, our hands raised, our spirits ready to receive from you a new idea, new dream. God, would you reveal yourself to us in a fresh way and know that it's an answer for this season, for this day. Would not one single person walk out of here that's raised their hand and not receive an answer from you? God, we are trusting you. We are believing in you. We believe what you say is true. We thank you that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear from you. 
God, we trust you. We trust you with the outcome. We will be faithful in our part and we will trust you to do what only you can do. Holy Spirit, whisper to us, give us ideas, give us insight. We are trusting you for this season and we thank you for it. And everyone said, amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for watching this message. We hope you enjoyed it and encouraged you this week. If you would like to give to our church, you can text to 77977 at our church. Also, you can give online at pushpay.com. We'd love to connect with you. If you'd like to connect with us, make sure you head over to ourchurch.us and we'll see you next week.